you lift up your hands and give the Lord some praise tonight? Yes. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord, I love you, Jesus. I worship you. trust him tonight. Yes. I like that song she sang last night, that chorus is so sweet, to trust in Jesus, just to take him at his word. Amen. Has God been good to you? Looking forward to the day that he comes back for his people. Amen. I have not seen, you have not, have not heard, neither has he given into the heart of man. What the Lord has prepared for them that love Him. It's going to be walls of jasper, streets of gold, gates of pearl, the crystal sea, a tree of life. But the thing that's going to be so wonderful about that place, the Bible said, the Lamb of that city will be the light. Anybody excited about going to heaven? Walking on streets of gold? Anybody excited about? appreciate the food basket and all of the meals and the kindness and the opportunity to uh, to get to spend with you folks and with Brother and Sister Driscoll. She's always trying to line me out, but it don't work. Amen. Honesty is the best policy. It just don't work. Amen. It's good to see Josh and Candace. I sure do love to aggravate Candace. I think she likes to be aggravated. <laughs> she don't have a choice. It just comes natural. <laughs> Amen. And uh, it's so good to be here. And uh, I don't know if we're going to teach tonight, treat, preach. But we're going to go to the word of the Lord in Psalms 23, verse number 1, to verse number 6, and then Matthew chapter 5. Verse number 13 to verse number 16. Thankful for the opportunity. I don't take it lightly to stand behind uh, this pulpit, and I am thankful for that opportunity. Amen. Psalms 23, verse number 1 to verse number 6. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures, he leadeth me. Beside the still waters, he restored my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod, thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Yes. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Matthew chapter 5, verse number 13, and verse number 16. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 13. The Bible said, Ye are the salt of the earth. But if the salt had lost its savor, wherewith shall it be salted. It is then therefore or thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under the feet of men. Ye are the light of the world. Yes, sir. A city that is set on a hill All right. cannot be hid. Yes, Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel but on a candlestick and it is giveth light unto all that are in the house. And then the Bible said, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father 
which is in heaven. Dear Master, we thank you tonight for your goodness. Thank you tonight for your mercy. Lord, as we break the bread of life, I pray that your anointing would rest upon the lips of clay. God, help me to follow after the Holy Ghost to minister to this people. Lord, to speak words that God will touch us and help us to be what you want us to be. And Lord, we will be careful to give you all the praise. Because God, we cannot do anything without you. We need your help. Help us tonight, Jesus, to be sensitive to the voice of the Lord, to the Spirit of the Lord. And God, we give you all the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Why don't you praise him one more time? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's magnify the Lord with his word. You may be seated. I want to talk to us tonight, and I may just teach, I may treat, we'll see how it goes. But my subject tonight is simply this, candles in dark places. Candles in dark places. How many is going to help me out tonight? Who can define or relate to the idea of goodness and mercy? It has, be, it has almost become a foreign way of life, an expression or lifestyle that was once lived in days gone by. A time when communities and families would work together to help one another with no hidden motives or agendas, with no expectations. It was simply the act of kindness, the expression of goodness and mercy towards our fellow man, that, that ladies would bake cakes and pies and, and just be neighborly and go to the neighbor and take those goodies and, right. and oh, how we enjoyed them. And, uh, yeah. and just, yeah. just a goodness and mercy and, and kindness, a way of life that used to be. Yeah. Amen. If you, know, if you have not noticed, there has been a shift yes, in our society. Right. A change in how we as a society interact and treat one another. In reality, we have come face to face with the spirit of the end time. This shift has much to do, amen, with the hour in which we now live. Amen. The Bible exposes the atmosphere of the end time. The Apostle Paul wrote as a pastor, a pastoral epistle. Amen. To Timothy, his son, in the gospel. He said, No, this know also that in the last days, perilous times shall come. I believe we're there. Amen. Amen. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, and holy without natural affection. They will be truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. All right. That is the hour in which you and I are living in today. The Bible said having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof from such turn away. Amen. Amen. Ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. We are now contending with an atmosphere that is slowly removing any connection with biblical values or biblical lifestyles. Our world has slowly become hardened by the effects of sin, sin that has stripped away the moral values and sin that has broken down the fabric of the family unit. Sin that has turned us into unemotional citizens and sin that has robbed us of the very idea of goodness and mercy that is the generation and the hour 
It's just the generation. It's what the Bible said it would be. Amen. It's what the scriptures exposed. Amen. That this generation, this is what would be going on. It should not be any surprise to you and I tonight. It's just the word of the Lord. And it was declared a long time ago. Oh, I don't know about you. Look at 
the man who wrote Psalms 23. He is spoken of in Acts chapter 13. Right. And afterward, the desire of the king and God gave unto them Saul, the son of Sis, a man of the tribe of Benjamin. Right. By the space of 40 years, and when he had removed him, he raised up unto them David right. to be the king to whom also he gave testimony and said, I have found David, yeah. the son of Jesse, yeah. a man after my own heart, right, right. which shall fulfill all my will. Yeah. Of this man's seed hath God, according to his God. promise, raised unto Israel oh. a Savior, Jesus. The word of the Lord refers to him as a man after God's own heart. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And God thought so highly of him that he allowed him to be in the lineage of Jesus All right. Christ. All right. All right. The word of the Lord said that it was through his seed yeah. that the promise of a Savior would come, and he did. Yes. Yeah. And while we honor this iconic biblical hero, and we quote Psalms 23. And as we reflect upon the fact that goodness and mercy have been extended to this biblical patriarch, let's not forget his failures. Let's not forget about the night that Nathan visited his house with a word from God in 2 Samuel chapter 12 when the Lord sent Nathan unto David and he came unto him and said unto him, there were two men in one city, the one rich and the other poor. The rich man had exceeding many flocks and herds, but the poor man had nothing save one little ewe lamb, which he had bought and nourished up, and it grew up together with him and with his children, and did eat of his own meat and drank of his own cup and lay in his bosom and was under him a, as a daughter and there came a traveler under the rich man and he spared the tent of his own flock and his own herd to dress for this wayfaring man that was come unto him but took the poor man's lamb and dressed it for the man that was come to him the Bible said and David's anger was greatly kindled against the man it angered him. Yes, sir. Made him mad. And he said to Nathan, As the Lord liveth, the man that hath done this thing shall surely die, and he shall restore the lamb fourfold, because he did this thing, and because he had no pity. And Nathan said to David, Thou art the man. Thou art the man. Yes, sir. Right. Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, I anointed thee king over Israel, and I delivered thee out of the hand of Saul. I gave thee thy master's house and thy master's wives into the root of thy bosom, and gave thee thy house of Israel, of Judah, and if that had been too little, I would moreover have given unto thee such and such things. Wherefore, hast thou despised the commandment of the Lord to do evil in his sight, that has killed Uriah the Hittite with a sword, and has taken his wife to be thy wife, and has slain him with a sword of the children of Ammon. And now, therefore, the sword shall never depart from thine house, because thou hast despised me, and hast taken the wife of Uriah the Hittite to be thy wife. Amen. Amen. What is the punishment for this sin under the Levitical law? The Bible tells us in Leviticus chapter 20. Amen. And a man that committed adultery with another man's wife, even he that committed adultery with his neighbor's wife, the adulterer and the adulteress, shall surely be put to death. I want you to understand that I'm not attempting to discredit David by any means. I just want to remind us that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All of us have skeletons in our closets. By all accounts, God should have judged us a long time ago. By all accounts, we should have all been out of the church.
instead of judgment, we found mercy. Instead of turning away from us, he has delivered and healed us. Instead of casting us to the side, he has shown us mercy and goodness. I know where God brought me from. I remember the sin that has me bound. I remember how lost I was. I was. It was my decision to live a sinful life. It was my decision to do the things that I have done. I deserve judgment, Brother Andrew. But what I found was his goodness. What I
and thank you for mercy. The mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon them that fear him and his righteousness unto the children's children. To such as keep his covenant and to those that remember his commandments to do them. Right. Lamentations chapter 3, the Bible said this, I recall to my mind, wow. therefore have I hope. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Anybody thankful for the mercies of God? Thy faithfulness of God. Hey, you might not remember every time you messed up, but I can walk through the corridors of my mind. I'm going to tell you where you would be tonight 
If it had not been for the mercies of the Lord, you would be in a death march to hell tonight. You would be lost and undone. You would be on your way to hell. Ah, oh, is anybody hearing me tonight? You wouldn't know anything about holiness. You wouldn't know anything about godly integrity. You wouldn't be living godly principles. You wouldn't have a church to raise your children to be in and to nourish them in the ways of God. You wouldn't have a church to surround you in prayer if it wasn't for Calvary, if it wasn't for an old record cross. sin 
and bloody by the effects of sin. You know what this city needs? For the first of they need a candle that will shine in the darkness. They need a candle that will go to their neighbor's house and be, be, uh, be willing to declare to them the goodness and mercy of God. They need a candle, hey amen, like David talked about, that said, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. I know that I'm messed up with Bathsheba. I know that I'm in a terrible act. But oh, the light came to where I was. And it brought me out of darkness into this marvelous light. Oh, come on, somebody. You're not alone. You're bought with a price. You've been purchased by the blood of the Lamb tonight. You are that candle. I don't mean you've got to have a 
pulpit. It might be in a convenience store. That don't mean you got to have a pulpit. It might be in a schoolhouse. That don't mean you got to have a pulpit. It might be on the job. But honey, if you don't hear anything else, your ministry is to light your candle. And let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine. I can't sing out on that. My wife says, quit. Facebook is watching. Facebook, you're just jealous because you ain't got what I got. The Bible said, make a choice for those in the Lord. He didn't say you had to keep on tune. But what he did say, he wants somebody to be that candle. That'll go to a dark place. And tell them about the love of God tonight. Hallelujah. Go to the joint right now. Come on, praise him. Right. All right. Upon 
your shoulders. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Can I tell you tonight? God can remove that weight. The Bible said, my little children, I write unto you that you sin not. But if you do sin, you have an advocate with the Father yes, of Christ sir. Jesus, Hallelujah. the righteous. Yes. There is a way out. There is an answer. They need to know, amen, that there is forgiveness, that there is remission of sin. Amen. Through baptism in Jesus' name, they need to know that God will give them power to overcome their weaknesses. They don't have to live in their uh, their addictions no more. That God will deliver them from their addictions. They need to know that there is a balm in Gilead, a healer. Amen. The Bible said that he sent his word and he healed him. They need to know that the word of the Lord can heal their family, can heal their broken marriage, can heal, amen, the wounds between them and their family. Oh, I'm preaching about uh, a candle that can go into the darkness uh, of the city and shine a light so strongly that people will come in droves. Uh, it's a preacher. Uh, I want that candle. Uh, I'm hungry for that candle. I need that candle in my life. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Why don't we stand for our feet? I know this is a little bit different tonight. And I feel like I'm in the Holy Ghost. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You are. I ask this congregation, will you take that extra step? Will you sacrifice your time? Will you sacrifice your energies? Will you sacrifice your resources? Yes, sir. Will you make it a point to pray for God's guidance and letting your light shine in the city? Yes. Will you be honest with God and say, God, if you can use anybody, I want you to use me. I want to take that extra time. I want to go out of my way. I want to be used to the Lord. I don't want to put my light under a bushel. I want it to shine. I want it to penetrate this present darkness. I want it to go into the dark areas of this city. I want to help somebody. I'm inviting you to come and consecrate and dedicate yourself to God and say, God, whatever you want to do in my life, I want to be a willing vessel. Whatever you want to use me in, Lord, I want to be used of you, God. I don't want to sit on the sidelines in the end time while people go to hell. I want to be that candle that will go into my city, that will shine in the darkness and let this world know about the goodness and the Church, we need to 